you can suss as a, as a coach whether the athlete performs well in testing in any environment or we might use other ways to try and um, guide us to make sure that we get training intensities right and that we can still track performance increases over time. Hi guys, Coach Fens here from FTP Training. Over the course of many, many years of coaching and uh, also in conversations with most of my coaches, there's a common question that gets asked of us um, by a lot of our athletes, and that's the question about testing. Um, what tests to use? Why do you use them? Um, when can we test? You know, what do the tests tell us? Um, obviously, testing is a great way to validate um, the, the, the effectiveness of a training program. You know, we want to be able to find ways in which we can test relatively ininvasively, so we're not having to get you into labs to quantify improvements over time. And that way it gives you the motivation to know that what you're doing is working and therefore you can, it gives you that more morale, more froth to, to go out and do more of it. So let's have a little chat about testing itself and, and I'll take you through a little history lesson that I've, that I've been through within sports testing um, and something which helps sort of probably um, sort of push me in, in, in a direction of testing in a certain way or not testing in a certain way if, if, if that's the case. Uh, I go back right back to probably the late 80s, early 90s. Um, I was racing in the UK um, with a couple of teammates and um, we wanted to sort of move up the scales. We wanted to ride at the premier calendar level um, and we wanted to get better and we knew that you know there wasn't the available data that there is now you couldn't look on Google and look up training programs and and have the wealth of information that you have now it was more the secret dark arts to a degree with coaching and most of the time coaching was done via heart rate okay power was used in the laboratories most most regularly um, uh, on things like an SRM but also on a King cycle and we found um, who was just going through his PhD at the time, uh, an incredible coach who's eminent in the field of physiology and sports testing. Um, he's probably written, I don't know how many papers, he's been involved with British cycling for many years. Um, it's Dr. Louis Passfield. Now, luckily, Dr. Louis Passfield or Louis um, said, yep, well, I'll coach you guys. So he said, I want you down to the labs at Chidester University and I'm going to get you tested. We're going to see where the base point is, where we're starting. If you've got, if you've got the minerals, basically, to, to, to sort of step up, okay? So we went down to have our first lot of sports testing, um, both excited and a bit daunting. You know, you walk into a laboratory situation, it's very sterile. You've got to, you put your bike on what is a very old looking trainer if we go back too many years. Um, which for some that have used the solder trainer where you just drop your wheel onto a tiny little metal roller, you know that they feel absolutely horrendous, um, but that's what they used. And, and that was connected to some, some uh, electronics which measured power output. It's called a King Cycle. It's one of the first sort of testing um, uh, ergometers, basically. So but what we did is we were on the ergo, we had fans, and we did a classic British Cycling Federation incremental ramp test um, to, to max, to VO2 max. Basically, it's called a VO2 max test, okay? You have a warm up, and then we had a 20 watt ramp, which means that every minute 20 watts was incrementally added through the time that we were on the King Cycle until we couldn't pedal anymore and we fell off the bike basically. Starting point for us was 200 watts and we were looking to try and achieve anywhere from sort of nine to 11 minutes if we, if, if, if we were you know, really going. So we started on the testing and all of us really probably didn't do as well as we thought. VO2 max was measured via Douglas bags and gas analysis. So we'd have a mask on, breathing into bags uh, with a lab assistant there taking the gases and from that they can look at your expired air and they would also count sort of breathing rate etc um, and from that they could ascertain um, your VO2 max by the volume of expelled air um, and we were also having lactate 
uh, analysis done. So throughout the incremental max test, we'd have a baseline uh, um, um, uh, lactate test done, and then each uh, through through the test at specific points, uh, they would take lactate um, to look at the deflection point in lactate, um, which would again allude to our um, training intensity and our sort of threshold and from that they could then work out what levels we needed to be working at correlating to beats per minute as opposed to power okay um, as well as that you're you're looking at you know the the fundamental test of trying to get the best power output that you can so anyway we didn't we didn't achieve it as well as we wanted i think most of us came out around 65 mils per kilogram and around we got to around 420 to 430 watts on the incremental max test okay we weren't necessarily super happy and after conversations with louis it didn't represent what we did on the road um and therefore he was he was interested by this so he got me back in and we did more testing again it didn't reflect what i was doing out on the road so he then decided he was going to take me to eastbourne university to do some different testing that testing involved doing an incremental test to max on a treadmill a massive treadmill used for horses called a woods treadmill um, he set that at a constant gradient and we started at a constant pace and then after a certain amount of time the speed would go up and i would have to continue to pedal uh, until i could pedal no more and i either flew off into the big uh, um, cushions and stuff that were padded all behind me or i could hang on to the side and try and just sort of cope with it and deal with it um, again masks and blood lactate so quite tricky to do that while you're on a on a treadmill um, exercising but that showed a massive increase in performance over what I had done out on the road. Uh, sorry, on the on the King cycle. So again, he was pretty interested by this. So a, a more realistic um, test, because obviously you're out really on a rolling road. So it was very similar to what you were going to be doing out on the road. So we ascertained that that was better for me than doing a king cycle test. And if we continued to do king cycle tests, although we could probably still make sure that the lactate would be the same and therefore we could give our training intensities the same, it, it was a bit demoralizing. So it, it wasn't great for the morale. Where you got in the woods, suddenly you hit much greater power. I got to 450 or 460 uh, on, the, on the woods, on the, kings, uh, on the treadmill. I felt buoyed, I felt great. You know, it makes you go out and feel much better. So again, many years later, um, that those experiences in testing um, held true with me when it came f for me to start coaching other riders. And very quickly, you can, you can suss as a, as a coach whether the athlete performs well in testing in any environment, or we might use other ways to try and um, guide us to make sure that we get training intensities right and that we can still track performance increases over time so mostly i would say that our coaches will conduct an, an ftp test i still believe it's a great test to do outside you can do it on the ergo and of course sometimes we've had to do that um, but very often people will not be able to produce the same amount of power on the ergo it doesn't matter what ergo it is um, I, I believe that most of the time that's a, a cooling problem most people don't have fans big enough to create and, and, and help with our evaporative cooling therefore our core temperature rises and as our core temperature rises to certain you know 39 degrees I in the lab and in the heat chamber I've added up to 40 degrees before we were pulled out as that was the ethical point um, you, your, your systems are going to not work properly. Remember that when you're exercising, most of uh, you know, your body is trying to say, well, I need oxygen in the working muscles, therefore I'm going to push as much of the blood supply that I can to help supply the uh, muscles with oxygen. Um, as soon as your core temperature rises too high, then, then obviously your body's trying to make sure that it doesn't break down and die. So therefore, blood is redistributed around the body, often to the surface areas around the skin, which will then help with the evaporative cooling with your sweating. If you haven't got big fans on you, that isn't working optimally, and therefore you get super hot, and therefore your power you produce is not as great. Um, so look, we, we can talk about that in, an, in another, in another um, 
uh, piece but it, with regards to testing obviously on the ergo that's going to have a significant effect on on your output okay and, and, and you're not going to achieve the outcome that you want so from a from a, a coach perspective i don't want my athletes um getting demoralized during testing because it's bad for morale and it, it's, it doesn't bode well for, for, for them getting out there and feeling that massive froth to go and smash out some great sessions. So I prefer to do the testing on the road if I can. It's less invasive, it's an easier environment, it's a better environment, it's a real environment, it's where we race. So the FTP test, 20 minutes, up a hill, and we work from 95% of that um, power output will give us a, a rough estimation of your functional threshold power and from that as a coach we can look and, and decide what levels you should be training at. Okay. If we get that wrong and we overestimate FTP, obviously it means that you're going to overestimate all of the training that you do. And as an athlete, um, pretty much every athlete I've ever known will always push to the upper limits of what is set in your training schedule. It's just human nature for someone that's a competitive animal, you know, a racer, you, you're going to say, well, Fens has set, you know, 300 to 320 to hold in these efforts. Well, I'm going to hold 320 to 325. So if we've set FTP high and we want you to work out at 95 to 100% of your current threshold, suddenly you're working out at 100 to 105%. And your ability to recover from those efforts is significantly reduced compared to working out at, say, 90 to 95 percent. And therefore, over time, that can lead to fatigue. It can lead to sickness. It can lead to, um, you know, just general breakdown. You just you can't be bothered to get out there and do it. The sessions look too hard. So it's vitally important we get that right. So if, if we think there's an issue there and we look back at historical data, we can, we can ascertain threshold quite well just by looking at the data that you've created over the course of, say, the last three months. But we look massively historically often to look at trends in that performance and also look at the power meters that you've used to produce those performances. Are they different? Because obviously if they're different, they could be plus or minus two or three or four or five percent accuracy. Suddenly there's a huge discrepancy between one that's reading five percent under and one that's reading five percent over. So from, an, from a coach perspective, we have to go in there. Sometimes we're looking at data points that just don't look right. We've got to clear them from your, from your, um, from your data on our, on our computer. So we get a curve that we believe is right and then we can guide um, uh, your training intensities via that and the test. I very rarely get people to go into a lab to do a VO2 max test. Um, it is invasive. You have to prep for it. You need to really, you don't want to be doing it during a heavy training block because obviously you're going to be fatigued and not produce your optimal numbers. Um, and therefore the invasiveness of that in a schedule is massive. And it, what does it tell us? You know, realistically, it will give us uh, an estimation of your thresholds, but um, it's, there are better ways, in my view, to do it, okay? Um, and, you know, the, the, the classic FTP test is, I still believe, th one of the best ways for us to develop your training intensities and for us to guide performance over time. Now, obviously, though, an FTP test really looks at um, your sustainable um, oxidative performance, okay, what you can sustain. Um, often races aren't won necessarily unless you're doing the tour on those big climbs. They're often won with smaller, harder intensity efforts. So therefore we can also do power profile tests. And power profile tests will look at the different part of your power peak, your, your peak power curve. We might look at eight to 10 second peak power, eight to 10 second power within testing, one minute power, five minute power, may look at three minute power and 10 minute power over a course of different days, testing those to see if there are areas within your power curve that we can then um, uh, adjust training to, to, to make better. Again, they're all done outside. Um, I would prefer to do all them outside, especially your higher intensity um, sprint type efforts. They're very, very difficult to do properly on an ergo. Um, you know, the, the, the ergo, whatever one you're using, cannot um, control the power when it's on really hard properly. You normally have to do seated efforts as well, rather than standing sprints. 
and I, I believe if you know again outdoor testing is going to be the best way to do that so look we've you know we've talked about testing in the lab um, and my views on testing on the lab people have a different views obviously if you're a scientist and you work in a laboratory situation you're going to you're going to say that you're going to be a, a, a proponent of that you're going to say that that's the best way to do it um, and there are definitely ways they're definitely for some people it's a great way to test and knowing it, uh, function, your, your, your vo2 max through testing and, and your lactates is vitally important but i believe we can do it better as i say with a standard ftp test and then some power profiling to look at testing to look at your shorter durational efforts and then all of that guides us doesn't it we can look at it and say does our 20 minute power correlate well with our 10 minute power obviously our 10 minute power is a higher contribution of our anaerobic um, work capacity um, is our five minute power super high how does the curve look is it dropping off too much does it reflect what the athlete is is it got a too high a peak you know this is a guy that's 55 kilos and climbs really well but it looks like he's a sprinter in his power profile so testing like that for me looking at the data uh, that you have as a historical data using today's plan is I still believe the best way to test. Okay guys, look, lots and lots of information there um, on, on physiological testing. I hope it helps you understand how it guides us as coaches to enable us to prescribe training intensities and test performance increases over time. Um, if you've got any questions, of course, you know, head over to the Run Ride uh, Race um, uh, Facebook page um, and, and join it. Um, you can send in a request, and I'll, you know, you know, I'll accept. Get you in there. Let's start conversations on things like this because obviously, the more we converse, the the better the outcome. There's lots of information and knowledge out there, and I'm, I'm, you know, always open to understand more because we're learning all the time. So I hope, as I say, hope it's an interesting, um, you know, little vid um, that it helps you um, as it obviously helps us guide your intensity in training and, and make you better for offers, basically. All right, then, guys. Well, hopefully I'll catch you out on the road or trail. Um, I'm still frothing a bit at the moment with um, Richie, uh, Richie's performance in the tour, and I'm fingers crossed that he's going he's gonna to pull off a podium position, and I might well have to just drive up to Paris to congratulate him. All right, guys, I'll catch you out on the road or trail. Bye-bye.